So, hello and welcome to Vaudeville Hippie's first how-to video. Uh, today we're going to be making wallets. So what we've got here is a number of different wallets made in various styles, out of different materials, uh, all of them made from the same design though. So if you have a look closer, you have a wallet, a basic billfold wallet, a piece of elastic, quick easy access, you open up, oh, wrong way around, and you have a buttoned money compartment, put your coins in, which also has a pocket behind for, well, whatever you want. Uh, we have one, two, three different card areas, plus we have extra storage behind those card areas, plus we have an area for your notes. Okay, so all of these wallets are pretty much the same in the same kind of format, just with different materials. Different inners, etc. Okay, so um, if you wanted to, you could put a button on the front here rather than having the elastic. What you may find is that when you're at the cash point or when you're at the in a queue, you struggle to open that button quickly and you'll have a queue of angry looking people behind you. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so let's um, see what we need to make these with. So you're going to need a number of items to make your wallet with. Uh, let's take a close look. First of all, you're going to need to make a decision about what materials you want to use. Um, I've made a decision that I'm going to use this old pair of kind of khaki green chino trousers, which no longer fit me. Uh, belly's too big, I'm afraid. And you're going to need some kind of lining material. You're going to need some iron interfacing. You're also going to need some buckram. Okay, buckram's kind of like a, a thin, plasticky material, especially for putting into peaks and anything which needs some kind of rigidity. Um, if you haven't, if you can't get hold of buckram, some acetate might do the job. Okay, so cut some pieces of acetate up because uh, it's plastic. Obviously, it won't be uh, damaged by any kind of moisture or water if you get rained on. Buttons. So I've got a selection of buttons to choose from later on, uh, some elastic, template pieces. If you're planning on making more than one, it's always an idea to have some template pieces. Okay, whilst um, adding a costume change to the uh, process definitely adds uh, entertainment whilst making a wallet, it definitely slows down the process. Anyway, let's move on. So what we've got here then, we've got the outer part of our wallet, and for the outer part of our wallet we have one piece of interfacing. I've actually cut up two pieces there to make up the size of that. We have two pieces of fabric. I have one for the lining part and one for the outer part. So two pieces of fabric for the outer wallet. That is at 12 by 25 centimetres. We have the inner parts of the wallet. Okay, so for the inner parts of the wallet here I've got four pieces. Two pieces cut from the uh, lining material and two pieces cut from those chino trousers for a bit of variety there. I also have two pieces of interfacing cut to the same size and that is at 11 by 25 centimetres. So that's the main part of the wallet. We have the money pouch and for the money pouch I have two pieces of material cut. Uh, one in the inner, the lining material, the flowery material, and I've done one in black because that's going to be the inside, that's where all the coins are going to be. The measurements for that are uh, 10 by 24 centimetres. I have the card part which is made of three pieces. One piece which is the flowery material which is 10 by 12, and two pieces which are also the flowery material which are 12 by 13. So in total, uh, well you can have quite a few pieces of material there. So we're going to take a single piece of card material which is uh, the 10 by 12 and we're going to fold it in on itself so it's five centimeters going that way and the 12 centimeters going that way so right side to right side and then we're going to sew down the edges there and there okay it's going to tidy up so I'm going to be sewing this um, piece here just down 
one side here and down the other side here um, with a seam allowance of about four eighths. If you can see there, we've sewn down this side and that side, and then what we do is we'll turn this piece inside out, and that will make one of the one of the pieces for our card holder. Okay, so what we've got now is the two pieces of fabric, which are 12 by 13 centimeters. These are also for the card holder. Um, we're putting them right side to right side, and we're going to sew all the way around the outside with a 4 8 seam allowance but we're going to leave a section at the top which we don't stitch so that we can turn it inside out later on. We can't see a stitching but we've stitched the corner there all the way down along the bottom, up again, and made another little corner but to lift the section open at the top there and now we will turn this inside out and just push the corners out to make a nice square. Before we um, turn this inside out it's probably worthwhile cutting off any corners just to kind of reduce any kind of bulk around the area. Okay so what we need to do now is the same thing with the um, coin the coin pouch area, the two pieces of material which are 12 by 24 centimetres. So we've got, for me I've got black and the flowery material. Uh, we want to put those face to face or right side to right side. Okay, And we're going to do the same thing, go around all the way around the outside but just leave a little kind of open area at the top to allow us to turn that inside out. Four eighths seam allowance. In the last corner, I'm just leaving yourself a couple of inches to turn that inside out. But before I do, same thing again, cut off any corners to reduce any bulk. What I've got now then is three pieces of fabric which I have turned inside out and I've just ironed them flat to kind of make those edges nice and crisp and what I have with um, each piece there is still an opening in the top where I turn them inside out so I'm now going to go around the edges all the way around of the top stitch just to kind of close those that edge up but also to put a decorative kind of stitch around the outside so I'm going to do that to all three pieces Okay, on this last one, um, I've only gone around the sides and the top, and I've still left the bottom bit open. I've done most of the sewing for the card compartment, which is going to be this one piece here, and this piece here folded over like so, and then they're going to be layered, staggered by about a centimeter each, and that will create that part of the wallet for your cards, as you can see what it does here. We've also created this long piece here, which is also going to be folded about a third and then a third again with a little bit of a gap and that will be sewn up the sides leaving the top bit open and that will create your coin compartment later on. But we need to put a button hole and a button on that. But in the meantime, we're going to create the um, inner little pockets for keeping extra cards in. Uh, here and we do this by taking two of the pieces of material that we cut at 11 by 25. I'm going to take the um, corduroy kind of 
greeny corduroy material and we fold these in half so I've got two of these and we're going to fold them in half like so and that will be that will create one of those halves which then this will be sewn onto later on. To give this a bit of rigid um, bit of structure uh, we're going to take one of those pieces of interfacing we did at the same size as this and we're going to cut it in half which I've already done and we're going to iron on a piece of interfacing onto one half okay so I'm ready to um, stitch down, I've ironed on the interfacing onto one half of that I've folded it over, ironed it and now I'm going to stitch down the folded edge that's the folded edge this one I'm going to stitch um, this piece on about a centimetre and a half from the top or five eighths if you're working in inches and about uh, just under a centimetre from the actual sewn edge or what looks like about two to three eighths if you're working in inches again okay so I'm going to sew down the stitching which I've already done along the bottom and up there and then stop there the first section of the card area and that will be uh, your first card holder now I'm going to put the uh, second one on which I'm going to fold to make card holders one and two. Overlap them leaving about a centimetre and a half gap at the top here and using a card for a measurement to line up with about the top of that area. The first one. I'm going to sew a line down the bottom here just so that when I put my card into this area it does stop at the, where I want it to stop. Using that card as a guideline now attached at that point and then obviously when I fold this piece over I leave another centimetre between the first two gap there, gap there and now I'm just going to sew down along the bottom and back up again one two three areas that's one part of the inner side of your wallet. What I didn't show you just then was uh, me having to uh, unpick most of the work I just did because in the process of rushing to make a video and make a wallet at the same time I didn't check the tension, the needle, just for make do. Always do that because it saves a lot of time in the long run. Anyway, what we have now is one side of our wallet made. You can see it here, I've just tested the free cards fit in. Okay, let's move on to the coin pouch. I've got this long piece here, I'm going to fold it in about a third or just a little bit over a third and then the other one folds and leaves you with about a centimetre gap here. Pull this underneath bit out and I'm going to sew just down the top there just to hold the um, top flap. I made that bit there so that will be held closed later on. Now I'm going to choose a button because I'm going to have to make a button hole here in the top. Okay. Right, so you need to um, uh, get your machine set up with uh, whatever function your machine has to thread a buttonhole. Right, so I've got my machine set up to um, do a buttonhole in the uh, top flap of the queen part. I've managed to get my uh, buttonhole in there and I use my stitch and pick to push through the fabric and open that buttonhole up. 
now I can get a thing through there and I will use a bit of chalk to mark through there where my button hole is going to go where my button is going to go on the other side I'll position my button in place I've changed my foot obviously taken the tread off the tread feed and I'm going to just check that my hand that goes from one side to the other yep, one, two yes, I'm happy with that Just check that all lines up so when that is folded over like so and the button will go through which it does and that will now make the uh, queen compartment right so I'm going to stitch you the, um, the queen compartment now onto the other inner flap area like I did with the with the card section I want to have this quin compartment lined up with the stitched edge about a centimetre and a half from there, a centimetre and a half around there. Just make sure you've got an equal distance around the bottom side and the top there for sewing later. I will be stitching down here along the bottom and up. That way it will leave the top part open to put quins in and it will also leave this top part here for a little pocket so I've actually just pinned that in place for now and I'm gonna just with that open position it so that the needle's just above the top right corner and I now have an open area put my coins in that will button down and I have a bit at the top extra pocket there Right, it's time to iron on the uh, interfacing to first of all your 11 by 25 piece of inner uh, wallet piece and uh, you also need to iron on a piece of interfacing onto your um, 12 by 25 so I'm going to get on with that. Shine this side down. Twelve by twenty-five, eleven by twenty-five, and I've ironed interfacing onto the back of both of them. You notice they're the inner parts that I've done that for, not the outer parts. All right, it's now time to make a sandwich. I've got my two eleven by twenty-five pieces here, one with interfacing, one without. I'm going to put one of them on the on the table, facing up, and I'm going to take the part with the coin pouch on it. And I'm going to position that on the right hand side. I'm going to get the piece of the co uh, cards on and I'm going to position them on the left hand side. Now, what I want to achieve about a centimetre and a half gap in the middle. Then I'll take my last piece and I put that face down. And I'm going to pin sides together on each side just to hold everything together. So I've got the back piece, top piece and the other two pieces sandwiched in there with a little bit of a gap in the middle. I'm now going to stitch along the top edge and then we'll fold it inside out. And flip it over, let's take the top part, flip it over to see what we've got here. So you'll see now that those two um, inner parts are sandwiched between the top and the bottom part. Okay, so now I'm going to iron that and this now needs to be sandwiched between the two outer pieces. So we have a 12 by 25 inner side here with interfacing on the back. I'm just going to go on the table and then we're going to put this, position this on top of that so that the bottom corners line up around here leaving about a centimetre poking out at the top take the outer part and have that facing right side down lining up with the edges there making a sandwich and now we're going to pin this in position okay so just to show you there I've pinned the bottom if I open it up there you can see the inner parts so I'm going to now stitch up the side, along the top, 
missing out that inner part, just making sure I only get those two outer bits of fabric and down. And I'm gonna stop here. What I forgot to mention is in that sandwich, you should have a piece of elastic go in between the sandwich at one one side about an inch away from the edge and then that way when you do it you'll actually catch the elastic in that top bit of uh, stitching there as you go around. Right I knew the um, uh, not putting the elastic in was going to bug me uh, so what I did unpick a small section uh, push through a piece of black elastic and then I've just stitched along there again so now when I turn it inside out that piece of elastic is caught in the seam. So I've ironed just around the edges just to help hold them in position and to hold the thing a bit flatter. This bit here obviously with a hole going all the way through and then uh, everything else is stitched around the edges. So how do we get the last, uh, the last bit done here then without uh, seeing a seam? Well we turn it inside out but we turn it inside out from the note compartment so where there's a big hole you put in there and turn that inside out. So now you'll only see the lining of the, the, the note compartment. Taking that piece of buckram that needs to go inside the area which is going to be the outer part of the wallet. Not the part with the card and coin pouch on but the other part. So push that a bit of buckram right in there, get it right into the corners. You will need to trim your buckram and fine tune your buckram to make it fit nice and snug. Push this all flat. It's worth giving yourself a good 3 8 seam allowance and it's also worth putting in a good needle, possibly a denim jean needle to get through all of these layers. Alright, most of that's done okay, but as far as I'm concerned, all of this stitching will be hidden inside the actual wallet, so if you need to go over it twice, then do so. I'd rather have a strong wallet than a compromised wallet. I have forgotten to bloody put that a bit of elastic in that seam. I'm going to have to unpick a little bit here, push the elastic through and then sew it up with the, uh, the elastic in. Make sure that the elastic is obviously not twisted, it needs to be flying flat. And now I'm going to go back over that and just catch that elastic in the seam. Alright, so we're almost there, believe it or not, after all of that. The last thing I'm going to do then, just before I turn it uh, inside out again, round the right way, is I'm just going to tidy up this edge here. So there's a lot of material and using a good pair of scissors I can cut some of that off and just trim off the corners a little bit. This, way. this flipping back inside out this way round is harder because you've now got the buckram in there, but just push it through, force it through, brute force. Pushing it into the corners there. Through I use this rounded tip on this pen. These corners are hard to get out. And we'll take a bit of time. Okay, so we have a finished wallet. Mm -hmm.